From realghoststoriesonline.com, this is Real Ghost Stories Online, the podcast. Group therapy for the paranormally affected. Thank you for joining us. Phone number is 855-853-4802. It's toll free. Call in 24 hours a day, seven days a week with your real ghost stories. Whether they uh, happen to you in the past or are going on as you're calling, which we've actually had some of in the recent uh, past. Yes, we have. Uh, we would love to hear them. 855-853-4802. So please do give us a buzz and uh, share your real ghost stories. That's the quickest way to get your stories on the air. It's the fast pass, as I call it. You can also write in if you'd like. A little bit longer wait down there to get those on the air, but you're welcome to do it on our website, realghoststoriesonline.com. And a reminder, become an EPP. That's an extra podcast person. Person, you get a bonus episode of the show every single week if you become an EPP. A lot of other extras will be coming your way as well. Uh, it's only five bucks a month. It helps support the show, keeps the wind in our sails, and keeps us on the air and covers those hard costs we have of putting the show out to you uh, every single day here at Real Ghost Stories Online. So we really do appreciate that and thank you in advance. On our last episode that we just put out there, really interesting story about... Uh, what could either be a haunting or a carbon monoxide leak. And we've talked about that a little bit in the past where it could have been either or. This one, though, very likely could have been a carbon monoxide leak. Spooky story. It was a good story. Except for after the people moved out, that part of the apartment that they lived in blew up. Yeah. Uh, which happens in carbon monoxide leaks. And what was going on with them was never anything harmful or seemingly demonic, but it was visual, apparition-like, or hallucination-like. Yeah. Um, so it's one of those where you kind of, you be the judge, and I'm not saying it was carbon monoxide 100%, but it, it's, it's one of the only cases I've ever heard of where they had the haunting stuff going on, or they so they thought, and then it blows up. Which makes you think, yeah, I wonder what that is. Anyway, get the full story. It's uh, on uh, the last episode, uh, EPP bonus episode, if you want to hear it. Uh, please become a member. Like I said, five bucks a month. Five bucks a month. Go to our website, realghoststoriesonline.com. Click become an EPP, and we'll get you hooked up with that bonus episode. It's a brand new one every single week for you. Uh, on today's episode, Joe, our demonologist friend, is uh, calling back in, so we'll talk to him. And of course, share your stories, your calls, your emails, all that good stuff at Real Ghost Stories Online. I just put this up on uh, Facebook not that long ago. Somebody sent this into us uh, about uh, some uh, someone's donation to Goodwill just in time for Halloween. Police are looking into the individual who donated a human skull to a Goodwill in Austin, Texas. Oh my gosh. Medical examiners. Uh, have uh, determined the skull is from an adult who died around two years ago. Can you imagine? No. I, I It's probably a good thing that uh, the they caught it, number one, because I could see that flowing through and just going out with like Halloween decorations, you know? Because there's some pretty convincing fake skulls out there. You're at, right. At some stores now. I think they have to go through quite a few quite a bit of training at Goodwill because like we recently had um, somebody turned in a real grenade. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yes. And they had to not only evacuate, but then, you know, research it, look into it. And it was an accident. It was yeah. somebody I think didn't realize it was real when they had it. Sure. So I bet you they see all kinds of stuff. And, you know, honestly, that could, it could fairly easily happen. The grenade thing. I mean, it. Um, there was a lot of, um, at least I think there was a lot of people who came back from uh, some of the wars, like World War II and such, that had some stuff with them. Oh, yeah. I know my uh, uh, my mom's dad did mm -hmm. um, when we were uh, cleaning out his residence, and I said it in quotations, uh, years ago uh, in the shed, uh, there was a live grenade. Yeah. And my mom found it and she's like, oh, look at this. And it, I mean, it was just sitting there in the shed for probably 20 plus years. Um, I mean, it was like a hoarding type shed too with animals and stuff that were in there. So, I mean, God knows. I mean, 
in summer heat, I mean, it was not, it was one of those places where it's like, what's the most risky place you could put a live grenade where, you know, something could happen to it uh-huh. if left unattended. And that was it. So luckily the shed never did explode and take out the area, uh, but they did uh, dispose of it with the police department. Wow. <laughs> but I think a lot of folks, you know, brought those things back, mm-hmm. you know, and didn't really think a whole lot of it. Um, and then... Time passes, you put it in a shed, you put it away somewhere, and the grandkids or the kids find it when they're cleaning it out years later. Yeah. And it somehow it ends up in a box going to Goodwill, because why on earth would anyone have a live grenade with them? <laughs> you know? Sure. Because that's what you're thinking. So, but the human skull. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they thought it was Halloween decorations. I suppose, you know, you could, if, yeah, you, you, if you don't know the person all that well, or maybe your dad's BTK, you know, oh, oh, yeah. Halloween decor. Nope. Uh, that's just disturbing. It is. So anyhow, I bet there's some of those out there. Some real ones. Yeah. I bet there's some real bones and stuff out there that people think is Halloween decor that they bought at a, you know, a garage sale or a, a just, you know, something, some resale. Mm-hmm. Not thinking like, oh, this is really, this really looks great. They, whatever this, you know, porcelain is or this plastic, it really feels real. And I bet there's some of these that are real out there. It's so bone like. Yeah, but yeah. There's a lot out there that that do feel like that. You know, it's it's like as you said at Disney World or Disneyland. Yeah, at Disneyland, the um, original skeletons that were used in the Pirates of the Caribbean ride mm-hmm. were from, I believe, the local university, and I'm not sure which school that is that's closest to the park. But um, they, over time, replaced all but, I believe, one. They kept one just kind of as an old homage to the original ride. But um, that's that's a published fact. I'm not even making that up. How easy is it to get your hands on a skeleton, a real one? A re- can you buy one? Like, is there a place to buy one? I don't if know. If you wanted to? I, I don't know if there is or not. I mean, I would think that it would be fairly regulated, you know, like for university use and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. I mean, I get that. I mean, so there probably is a marketplace for it. But how open is that marketplace? Well, Do you how, have to be accredited of some sort? To how hard it? is it now for a company to make an anatomically correct skeleton? I mean, I don't really see the need of having an actual... No. Real bone skeleton. I mean, unless you were doing a like a, a cross section of bone to show the different, you know, sure. the way the bone is formed and everything. But for the actual articulation of how the human skeleton is, I think you'd I don't know. be fine with one of the artificial ones. I don't know. I really. But if you wanted to get your hands on one, how would you do that? I don't. Know. <laughs> no, I'm not asking to get one. I, I don't. I, I don't. I don't want to get. One I don't know how you'd get your decorate hands on a home real one. with one. Someone will buy right in with that. Well, grenades or skeletons or skulls. I will still shop at Goodwill. I love Goodwill. Oh yeah, some great stuff there. <laughs> um, the uh, when I was a kid, I remember uh, for a Halloween decoration once. It was not a skeleton that someone put in their yard, but there was one kid. This is in my first grade class, and it was kind of the kid who was a little bit odd. Um, he didn't. He, he was always the one that was acting up. and there, I don't think he came from a great home. I, I think there's probably a lot of, you know, things that were not right going on in that home with him. But as a first grader, you don't know any of these things. And you just think, oh, kid's kind of weird. Um, as an adult, I really do feel bad for him. I don't know whatever happened to him. But um, I remember uh, we knew where he lived because I think our bus dropped him off or something. Um, and of all the weird things that you could put in your yard, and this is... 1990-ish, right around there. Um, you know, people decorate for Halloween, uh, but a lot of people don't have, like, a full-blown casket. Like, real casket. Not like, hey, we made a spooky Dracula-esque looking casket out of wood. No, it's like, oh, we got this out of the basement of the funeral home casket. For Halloween or all the time? Halloween in the front yard for two days before Halloween. And we were talking, like, it was like mid-October, then it went away. It was weird. That is weird. It, it was just, it was a casket. It wasn't open or anything. It was just like out there in the middle of the yard on like the gurney thing that they put caskets on, you know? Uh-huh. And sitting in the front yard as like a Halloween decoration, I'm assuming. It was October. And it was it was like the talk of the town. Like, where did they get that casket? Because caskets aren't cheap. No, they're not. And this was not a nice. This was like a very run. Like, 
probably not making enough to get to feed the family type house, okay? And like the so, casket's the nicest thing. So there. how are they getting this casket? Why the hell do they have a casket in their front yard? Um, and it was it was there and it was gone. And I don't know. I mean, I suppose it'd be something someone may want to steal. Um, I don't know if that's what happened to it. But one of the many bizarre things I remember that surrounded that child. And I, I God knows what happened to him. But Well, you know, our mall has a casket store in the mall. Gone now, but... No, I think it's still there. No, it, it, it did just recently close. It I did? Know, yeah, but they, they are still in business. They just left their mall front location. <laughs> I wonder why. This is the casket store, and if anybody's heard of it, um, it's, it's become quite famous nationally because they, uh, they make essentially custom caskets in different shapes and forms for different people. Mm-hmm. So you, you say, hey, I want a casket that... Uh, I don't know, give me an example. I'm trying to think of something. Looks like a make. motorcycle. Yeah, they'll make it. Yeah, they I've, they had one like that in their their showroom, I guess, is yeah. what you would call it. All different types. Like, I think one would look like a crap table like uh-huh. from a casino. Um, and they just had this whole... And it was in a, it was a mole French... It was like next to the uh, uh, the Spencer's. Or, it, it was. It and was, by the icing. Yeah. It was in between the Spencer's <laughs> and the theater at the mall. Yeah. So, like right there. Yep. It was weird. So you can go to Caramel Crisp and get your uh, your popcorn and then go check out caskets. And then go get your uh, your daughter some hair braids at the icing, right? <laughs> it's, yeah. <laughs> when mommy dies, mommy wants the Barbie-themed casket. Oh, God. Yeah. So I would claw myself out of that one. <laughs> uh, but it was in the news several times, oddities of a... Uh, of a mall store, but anyhow, 855 853 4802 is a phone number to call in. 855 853 4802. Hey, there's a way you can take demonology courses online now. Yeah, seriously, there is. You know how there's a lot of websites that you can take classes? They're not like accredited classes, but they're like teachers out there that do. Uh-huh. I was I was hit up on that for like cooking when I was doing the cooking show and everything by many people like, oh, I do a cooking class online. And so there's a lot of places that do that sort of thing. That's a little bit hard. That For demonology? Could, no, no, I'm saying for cooking. That's a little bit hard to do that online. That's such a hands-on well, thing. There's so many places you can watch a recipe video. You don't necessarily need to have someone. Anyhow, but demonology, there's a way, there, there's a, there is a class. We'll talk about that in just a little bit here at Real Ghost Stories Online and what that, uh, what that class is all about and what it consists of. 855-853-4802 is the phone number to call in with your real ghost stories. Hi, guys. This is Carrie. Um, I just heard you tell my story, and I wanted to apologize if you thought I was being mean. I was just teasing with you when I said it was lacking something without her. It was more from you asking people if they didn't want you to do the show when she wasn't there. So I was just kidding, but... In all honesty, though, Jenny, I do love your addition to the show. You really add something. You balance him completely. And you can tell that you guys are definitely meant to be. But um, since you said that I could tell you some of my religious stories, um, I'll start by telling you one. There was a girl where we went to church, and she was not full mental capacity. It's the best way I could describe her. Um but she had a very odd look to her. And the thing is, I don't know if she only had an odd look to me or if other people see this. Um, This is actually a question that I would love for you to pose to the uh, psychics that call in, the mediums. Um, There are times when I see people and they don't look right to me. (laughs) This is gonna sound like I'm mental. They almost look like corpses. Um, in the way that their skin looks very translucent, almost grayish. Sometimes their gums look grayish black to me and their eyes look very vacant. And um, I've only seen this on probably a handful of people and I almost describe it as being soulless. That's probably not an accurate term and it's maybe it's demon possession, I don't know, but I am able to see it and it's extremely scary. Um, But back to what I was saying, there was a girl that I went to church with who had this look to her. And she was extremely obsessed with my mom. And my mom was a good Christian lady. You know, she taught Sunday school. She was a wonderful person. And this girl would come up to her and would grab onto her and, like, get this eerie-looking grin on her face and just, like, squeeze onto her to the point of leaving bruises. 
um, one day she did this, and I just came up and grabbed her hand and pulled her hand back. And when I touched her, it was like touching marble. And as I found out later, um, it felt like touching a corpse. So it was a very odd experience to me. But anyway, this girl became obsessed with my mom. And she would try to give my mom things to take home with her, gifts. And I would never let my mom take them. We would always end up throwing them out of the car on our way home from church. Um, because I didn't want to bring anything from her into our home. And, you know, this continued on for quite a while until finally um, her and her stepfather, who attended the church, left. And we hadn't seen them in a very long time. Uh, it was probably maybe a year later, we had went to a different church to visit for a revival, and they showed up. And this girl still had these problems. And if you heard that in the background, that was not an EVP. That was my chihuahua coughing. <laughs> um, but anyway, so we went to a revival at this church, and her and her stepfather showed up again. And um, again, she clung on to my mom really bad. And one of the uh, preachers that were there that day came over for some reason and just laid his hands on this girl and started rebuking her. And again, if you're familiar with the Pentecostal religion, that's what we do. And so he started rebuking her, and my mom had her hands on her and was praying for this girl, and all of a sudden this girl starts convulsing. And for the look of panic on my mom's face, my mom was a registered nurse. I think she thought she was having a seizure. And all of a sudden, she throws her body forward and opens her mouth ridiculously wide. And this pink ball of, well, I thought it was gum at first when I saw it, but it was bigger than any wad of gum a normal person would have in their mouth came flying out of her mouth, hit the church floor, and then just disappeared. Well, my mom gets up, grabs the tissue. She's going to pick up this wad of gum off the floor because I was not the only person that saw this. And it was absolutely gone. It, there was no way that it, it was like bubble gum pink, but it was probably the size of like a baseball. So there's no way that that was a wad of gum that she had in her mouth. But we were all so stunned by what just happened that we weren't thinking at the time. And this girl just slumps forward and, like, goes to sleep. And then all of a sudden she wakes up and she's looking around completely confused. She has no idea what happened. And it was like a totally different person. Her skin didn't look the same to me. She didn't have that corpse look to me. Um, she was obviously very confused, and it didn't change her mental capacity. She was still, you know, slightly not fully functioning. But she was different. You could tell something changed inside of her. I have not seen her since that time, so I don't know what's happened with her since. But I do believe that we saw a demon leave her body that day. I fully believe that with all of my heart. Well, anyway, this was just one of my stories. I do have one that's pretty intense. I don't think most people will believe it, and I'm still rather timid on even actually telling the story. Um, so I wanted to kind of warm the waters with this one. <laughs> so um, it was really great talking to you guys again, and thank you for telling my story. Um, I hope you have a great day. And, again, I apologize if you took what I said wrong. It was just my twisted sense of humor. So have a great day. Thank you for the call. Nothing was taken wrong. We were just kind of teasing right back. So that, that's, that's all totally we fun. do is tease. Um, and, by the way, uh, you're testing the waters. The water's warm. We're welcome. Uh, we're glad you're in the pool with us of uh, Real Coast Stories. That was a good one. And please share your other story. We would love to hear it. Um, like we said before, this there there really is no... Uh, story that we're not open to hearing here on the show. I mean, it, it is extremely rare that we do call BS on anything, and usually when we do, it's because the call was called in by, I know, a, a twelve-year-old, and they were obviously making a, you know, it's an inconsistent, bizarre story that really 
you know, Casper shows up in it or something. Or we suspect that somebody is reading a story that's been yeah. published elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, other than that, and that's like 0.001% of the calls we get. Yeah. So, um, other than, than those odd situations where I think most of our listeners can also feel the same way, mm-hmm. um, we're not going to call, you know, bullshit on anybody's story because that's just what this community is for. It's for sharing these stories. Um, and, and getting some, you know, honest feedback and, and honest thoughts on what it is that, that we've experienced, gone through, seen, you know, witnessed, whatever the case may be. So, uh, you're not going to get judged here uh, with that, uh, whatever your other story is. So please do call back and share thoughts on this one. I think it's amazing. Um, I'm, I'm very interested in, in sensitive people because there's all different kinds of sensitive people. And I've never heard of one that can look at somebody and tell that they are perhaps possessed without them showing an action or, or acting as such mm-hmm. the way she is. So I think that's fascinating. I think that is, that's a gift. I know you said it was scary, but to be able to tell anything like that, I think it's a gift. So have you ever heard of that before? Uh, no, I haven't. But it sounds like, I mean, <laughs> it sounds like something out of a movie, you know, where you're like witnessing the walking dead or the, the possessed, you know, it's um, that's spooky. That's interesting. I, I fully believe, you know, that some people have that gift and she probably does. Um but that that's got to be really kind of scary because I bet there's a lot of people she sees yeah. that are essentially the walking dead. Well, but she said, you know, it's only been a handful that she's seen that have have looked appeared like that. that way to her. Yeah. But, you know, considering the events that she described, I'm yeah. betting that she's able to tell when somebody's got something that's latched on. Yeah, I think she was witnessing a possessed person the entire time. And that's interesting that there was that woman was trying to latch under a mom in such a way. I mean, it's, it sounds like the demon was taking over that girl that was, for whatever reason, trying to get, um, you know, in touch with her mom or make an acquaintance with her mom to get closer to her mom to then maybe transfer transfer to her mom you know well, or, or, or somehow plague her mom you know? i'm glad she followed her her gut and not letting her mom bring any of those things home that the girl tried to give her you know because you never yeah. know when that stuff you know could be carrying something too yeah i would love to get like joe's feedback on that yeah being a demonologist Definitely. Um, we do have a call from joe and obviously when joe's called today he has not heard that story yet but uh joe i know listens religiously so um, no pun intended. No pun intended. <laughs> um, um, you know, I, I'd love to get uh, get some feedback from him on that story because that's really, that's one of a kind. I haven't heard anything like that. I haven't either. I want to hear more of your story, so yeah. please call in. That was great. 855-853-4802. 855-853-4802 is a phone number to call in. That Demonology uh, 101 course, somebody sent us the link for that. And this is being offered on, uh, again, it's one, I'm not going to plug it or anything like that because it's, it's a, it is a paid course. It's 45 bucks, one time only. And uh, it says, welcome to Demonology 101. The fun laid back course covers the basics of demonology, the study of demons. And it's presented as an online video course with visual aids. Movie clips, evidence, and images are included. Also included is a section on how to remove severe and demonic hauntings. Sessions vary in time, excluding session, session A, based on content, but vary from 20 to 40 minutes. Five sessions included in this course, and sessions A3. The final two sessions will be added in the next two Wednesdays. Sorry, no refunds. What do you think? I mean, part of me is like, okay, if you want to learn something about it, if it's coming from a reputable person about the author, uh... In addition to 14 years of paranormal experience and psychic experiences, this person is a demonologist, paranormal investigator, minister, spiritual hero, healer, and counselor. Been featured, uh, okay, been featured on a couple things. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so it's like a, one that's been on TV a couple times with some stuff. Um, I don't know. So she does look fairly accredited. I'll say that. She does look fairly accredited. Um, maybe knows her her stuff pretty well um selling the course okay 
you know, if you want to provide information and you want to put it out there, I see nothing wrong with trying trying to make some money because you're putting your time in, into it and, and putting some stuff out there. Nothing wrong with that. I, without taking the course, it's really hard to judge this. Um, the only thing I, I may have some issue with is the how to remove severe demonic hauntings. See, that's that's my exact thing. Like, I don't think it's a bad idea to take a course just to learn about it because that's sure. interesting. In fact, there's some courses that are offered, and I call them push the envelope courses. You know, they're the ones like demonology or witchcraft that sure. are offered actually at my university that I'm attending. They offer demonology? I believe every once in a while they do. Neat. So I'm thinking about taking that because I need um, electives like crazy. Okay. So anyway, there's that. Okay. And I think that's interesting. But my my issue is, like you said, it's kind of the quote unquote, uh, let's teach you how to get rid of demons. Because I think that's dangerous yeah. for somebody to do. But that, That's the one part I have issue with. The rest of this, I could see this being actually really interesting. And yeah. I'd actually consider taking it just to learn some stuff. It's the, we're going to show you how to remove this stuff. Because I don't think that somebody after taking... A five-hour online course is necessarily going to be qualified to remove demonic spirits from a home. Right. Call me crazy, but I don't think that you maybe are going to be a qualified individual. And and what's, what's scary to me about that is this. It's one thing if you're going to take it and try and handle this yourself, which is, number one, not a good idea, you know, to, to remove whatever is going on in your house, if that's what you're taking it for. The scary part about this to me is you're going to have some folks who take this course they're going to cite it on a resume to someone as I know how to get demonic things out of your house because I took this course. See, I'm accredited. I took this course. Um, and they're going to tell other people that. And these other people aren't going to know the difference. They're not They're not going to go, oh, they're not going to look it up. They're not going to reference this and go, oh, you took the four-hour online course and now you know how to remove demons. Right. You know, they're going to think, oh, this person really knows their stuff. They're accredited. They, you know. Mm-hmm. That that's where it can get out of control, and you can get a lot of people doing that. Yeah. So anyhow, thoughts, real ghost stories online community. I would love to hear some feedback on that. Am I overreacting to that? I don't think so. I think it's, I think it's opening a box of worms or can of worms. Yeah. Again, I mean, I'm looking at, and actually, it shows you the length of the courses. Course number one is nine minutes. <laughs> Course number two is twenty nine. Number three is 39. And there's two more to come. So you're, you're talking less. If the next two courses uh, that are not up here yet are uh, in line with the first two, they're about 30 minutes long. You're talking less than three hours of information on the topic. You know what? We probably have almost that much amount of time in conversations with Joe. We probably do. So I don't. Yeah. There you I, go. Again, looks interesting. But, yeah, I don't think we, it should be publicized as learn how to remove demons. I don't think it's a good idea. No. Okay. Uh, thanks for sharing. That's interesting. Uh, 855-853-4802. 855-853-4802 is the phone number to call in to our show here at Real Ghost Stories Online. Speaking of Joe, he called in today. Let's listen to Joe's call. Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, Tony Organi, this is Joe, the Minister of Demonology. I just want to say it touched my heart with the young lady that uh, mentioned my name. Much appreciative. The things that are being moved around um, also could be when a person's in the area, it could be telekinesis. Um, some people have the ability to do that with their mind, um, but they can move objects and make things happen. There was a wonderful case of a young lady back a while ago that did, did such things, but uh, uh, that's another story for another time. Anyways, there are people with that wonderful ability and that gift that do have that. Um, also, the one with the mannequin with the young man, I think, saw the face or head on the mannequin outside. Is some of a theory that uh, entities can project energy imagery into somebody's mind and make you actually see something and uh, project that image in the mind and the person can see 
the object or see the entity where another person cannot. Or it could be a glute type of effect. Uh, little is known on the other side of what these apparitions can do, but we do know they are doing some amazing things. And then through time and studies and um, prying into these subjects with these wonderful individuals that are doing this, um, we will find out the answers hopefully one day and be with peace with it. I had a case a while back with my investigator, Wesley Fox, um, a young couple with some children were being attacked by a demonic entity. And one young man was 15 years old and had a girlfriend. Um, uh, they had relations and had a child. Um, the demonic entity was attacking the older brother of the family and the family itself. And the youngest was five years old. Um, the couple reached out to Wesley and then Wesley reached out to me and I had conversations with the family. They were terrified. And such terror uh, is, is beyond words. Um, so we did a, Wesley went out and did an investigation. Um, we sent out a blessing kit to them. They did the cleansing and exorcism and um, it was gone. The last night of the uh, attack, the five-year-old and another sibling were home, and they were terrified. Uh, I always sent the kit, which was a candle, and the mother instructed the child, for my instructions, to light the candle. Uh, but it was successful, and um, the, uh, the demonic entity is gone. And the mother could not thank me enough. She says, I don't know what I would have done, where I would have gone if you were not around. Well, this is the same thing with your broadcast. Same type of situation with spirit, it's important. Uh, Tony and Jenny, as I said before, you guys are doing the most wonderful uh, aspect of broadcasting at this time of the century, which I mean you are reaching to people that have a problem and they are able to express that problem. Even if it was just to say on the air, hey, I had a situation and I like to express it, how good it makes them feel psychologically and spiritually that they find peace with it uh, after the event's been told. And the strain and stress is lifted off their shoulders. And they feel that others can relate to their situation. And through that common bond, we will become stronger people in this nation. And I thank you for that. As I always thank you. I'm also an EDP. Uh, person now, I donated uh, through PayPal five dollars a month uh, because I believe in your show and I believe in you too. And Jenny, you have such a warm, touching heart with people, and they relate to that. And I thank you for caring about people. It, it's such a rare art these days that uh, people even help a stranger, as that one young lady was said. Anyways. Um, to reiterate with the Ouija board that was pink and the, the comments on Amazon, I'm sorry, I think some of those are bogus. Uh, I don't know if they were telling the truth or not. I, but to me, that's kind of, you know, reaching. I'm not saying it didn't happen. I'm just saying it's reaching. Anyways, um, I don't want to go on and on and on, but um, uh, I just wanted to say that uh, I look forward to talking to you sometime on the phone and maybe down the road meeting you guys in person. And um, you guys are, are very informative. Uh, if you guys don't know the answer, you find out what it is, and in another broadcast, you give that answer. You give updates, which is tremendously important. So uh, you guys make me feel good, and that's important too. Um, so anyways, um, oh, anyways, one more thing. Tony? Buddy, I think you carry the show very well, even by yourself. So uh, I think you do very well, too. Jenny is just an asset. You both are an asset. I think either way, you guys carry the show. Um, so I just want to say, man, you're doing a good job. And Jenny, you also. So anyways, um, everybody out there, I want to say God bless to you. You are special, you are important, and you are unique. Remember that always. And if you have a situation that is depressing or hurting you, 
please talk to somebody. Or even contact me. I'll talk to you and I'll listen. I do care. I really do care. So everybody, God bless to you all. Uh, Jenny and Tony, I will talk to you soon. Everybody have a good day. Bye-bye. And thank you again, Joe. I really, I enjoy it when you call in. You always have such good insight into our stories that we've talked about. Really do uh, appreciate uh, the insight. And I agree. The uh, I, I, Some of those Amazon reviews I, were not meant to be real, I think. It, no. It was people kind of just making fun of the fact that there was a pink Ouija board and just the absurdity. Yeah, they were being facetious, I think. Of the concept, which we did, by the way, today, have our Ouija awareness talk with our daughter. We did. We did. <laughs> she didn't even know what it was. I was so happy she didn't say, oh, we play that all the time at Kate's house. <laughs> we do a recess, Mom. We don't play kickball anymore. It's Ouija. <laughs> yeah, she didn't know what it was, and we told her, you know, we were probably, I was thinking this is so crazy that we're having this conversation, yeah. but. Showed, showed her pictures of them too, because she knew what they look like. Yeah, so she knows and, and not to play with them. And I said, you know, that she's supposed to um, tell an adult. And if the adult says it's okay, it's not okay. And then she's supposed to call my, call me because she knows my number. She gives it to her little friends now. Yeah, we actually got a call from a friend. Can we I did. talk to the VTD? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> it was cute. We want to come over and play Ouija with us. Uh, no. But, uh, yeah, it was our Ouija awareness talk. And I think I phrased it as, you know how we say, you know, people say drugs are bad and dangerous? Yeah, same thing. Yeah. Just as dangerous. And we told her about how many of the calls that yeah. we get or the stories that we get yeah. that start out with, oh, I played with a Ouija board when yeah. I was a kid and it ruined my life. And uh, I also, because she's, she's been asking us, uh, you know, can I listen to, to some of the shows? You know, and she'll ask, uh, in which you don't, we don't let her listen to the show. Don't worry. No. Uh, um, but uh, sometimes, you know, there's a, a fairly tame story that we can share. And we'll talk to her, you know, she'll, she'll ask, like, can I, you at least tell me, like, some story that won't scare me too much? Or we'll tell her of yeah. ones where a loved one came to say goodbye before they went, yeah, went on. Yeah, nice. And uh, I said, you know, the stories that we don't tell you that, you know, we are afraid are going to freak you out and give you nightmares. Yeah. Well, they usually start with a Ouija board. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yep. So I think we got the message across. I think so. At least she's aware. So now if somebody does pull it out at a slumber party or whatever. Yeah. No. And I gave her the Ouija awareness ruler, just like the dare ruler. <laughs> <laughs> and she's excited. And the coloring book for the Ouija board. Uh, no, just kidding. Somebody sent me a... Uh, Speaking of the Ouija board, uh, is your life uh, uh, is your busy life interfering with your conjuring of evil? Never have that worry again. Now you can conjure spirits right from your phone with your very own personal Ouija board phone case. Yep. You know, see, it, I mean, it's just a phone case with a Ouija board on it. I mean, you got to figure that this exists uh, with all the. There you go, little Ouija board phone case for your iPhone, right there. If it didn't creep me out, it's kind of cute. Yeah, except for the fact that it's a Ouija board. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, um, I mean, of all the things, everything's on a phone case. But, yeah. But there you go. There's the Ouija board phone case out there. Somebody sent that into us to because uh, of all the talk. <laughs> My favorite was the one that we put up on the website the other day that someone forwarded to us, the Mick Ouija Happy Meal. The Mick Ouija. <laughs> That was great. And I think some folks actually thought it was real. Yeah. I mean, it does. Whoever made the graphic really does did a good job. Um, but no, it is, in fact, not real. McDonald's is not releasing a Ouija board Happy Meal for Halloween yet. <laughs> <laughs> because there is that Ouija movie coming out. Well, yeah. And see, I thought it was tied in with that. No. Okay. No, that's like, that's, I think, like an R-rated film. Well, okay. Yeah, I kind of thought, but I was yeah. like, I, nothing. You for a second thought it was. Nothing would surprise no, me. No, no. At this point, no, I, I no. agree. But no, it was not, in fact, a real Happy Meal. <laughs> but if it weren't so absurd, I mean, it's just the absurdity of it makes it hilarious. Yeah. But uh, there we go. 855 853 4802. 855 853 4802 is a phone number to call in with your real ghost stories. We would absolutely love to hear it. Call in 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Hi. Hey. My name is Caitlin Woody, and I live in Naknek, Alaska. I've um, been listening to the show for quite a while, really enjoyed it, and I just heard you guys talk about sliders, and that was really exciting to hear, because that happens an awful lot to me. Um, I mean, it could be confirmation bias, who knows, but the my husband can attest to this. Um, when I go into town or when I go 
shopping or into a bar, the comment I've heard more often than not from people is, oh my gosh, this has never happened before. When, you know, trying to work a computer, a cash register, the most recent experience I had was we were, uh, or my husband kept on going over to a karaoke, uh, no, not a karaoke, a jukebox machine, and he was putting on all sorts of stuff. And I kept on saying, oh, will you go put on this for me? Will you go put this on for me? And eventually he was like, I have a bunch of credits on it. You should go ahead and do it yourself. And it had been working all evening, and I hadn't approached this on our uh, other trips to this place. But I walked up to it and tried to press a button, and literally the first button I pressed turned the whole thing into a blue screen. And um, I'll be damned if they could get it to work again before I left. I'm actually not sure if it's still working. I'll find out today. Um, but I do have a, a paranormal experience to share with you. What happened was, well, this is about eight or nine years ago. And uh, I like all spooky stories. It happened around midnight. And I only remember that because Iron Chef Japan used to come on at midnight. And it was about five minutes into the show. And I'm sitting downstairs uh, with a very old cat in my lap and she's dead asleep and I'm watching the show uh, and our living room kind of leads off to several different hallways and one is just to a zigzag kind of hallway that goes to the garage. I mean, no, it's, um, it's just dark. And as I'm watching the show, I see this corner, this hallway out of the corner of my eye and I see a light about four or five feet above the ground and it stayed for about one second like that long I was able to look over and see it and it kind of paint brushed uh, about a foot down it went back and forth and then it just disappeared and I would have just shirked it off but that old cat in my lap just sat bolt upright her back was to that area and she just sat up and would not stop staring at that spot down the hallway. And I got really spooked. Um, and I just sat there paralyzed with the cat for a while. And um, eventually I turned off the TV and I kept the light on and I walked a different way around that hallway to go upstairs. And uh, several days later, I mentioned it to my mom and she said, oh my gosh, I've I've seen the same thing there. And my dad usually wakes up uh, for an hour between three and four in the morning. He wakes up, he reads some, and then he goes back to bed. Uh, that's just his kind of thing. And he said he had seen it as well. So uh, one night, my mom, who is very straight-laced, I mean, she isn't woo-woo by any means, uh, not particularly sensitive, but um, but she stood at the top of the staircase overlooking that hallway, or not overlooking, but you can see into the hallway, and she said, uh, Spirit, I mean, I we know that you don't mean any harm, but we need you to leave. You're scaring us. And we hadn't had any problems until one day um, my mom fosters kittens. And it was, so it was the middle of the day, and my husband was sitting next to me, and these kittens, there's about five of them just, running rampant like kittens always do around the living room. They're going crazy. We're sitting in the same spot on the couch that I had been sitting on that night. And all of a sudden, like we didn't see anything, but all of a sudden, like the kittens from all over the living room just stopped and uh, walked to that spot in the hallway and just looked up like all of them did. And my husband was like, oh my gosh, that spot. I mean, I was like, ah, you see it, you see it. So that was really exciting. But um, anyway, that's my story. I'm really excited to have a, uh, a word for my uh, inability to be around cash registers and computers and new things like that. But um, you guys do a great job. Thanks a lot and have a great day. Bye. Thank you for the call. That's that, that sounds like an extreme slider case. Yeah, taking it really out does. cash registers and jukeboxes. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah, that's interesting. But there's a lot of folks who have that. Yeah, and it's uh, it's just kind of like something you got to live with almost. I, I've never heard of any like um, cure for that, for lack of a better term, or solution for that. You know, but um, 
it sounds like it could become a rather difficult thing, especially if you were like were to work in an office environment or something on computers or electronics frequently. I could see that interfering with the job quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, the copy machine on the fritz, that's frustrating for somebody that doesn't have the yeah. slider ability. That could be uh, uh, an issue. I wonder if anyone out there, any of our listeners, uh, possess that and uh, actually do have trouble in the workplace. Can you imagine trying to explain that one to a boss? <laughs> you, don't, you don't get it. I'm a slider. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh, man. Really? I mean, that's where it's like, okay, we're going to have to call HR and... Uh... <laughs> see how that conversation goes yeah at least you can listen to this show and find some solace and uh and comfort knowing that we believe you uh because i could see hr going um you know seriously you just you know or or even worse trying to explain that to an it department at a uh, at a business because most it departments not the most receptive to even normal questions you know yeah, I could see that in most cases. In most cases. Although I'm thinking about the IT department at my work. You have a good IT department at your work who actually are into these things. They are. The IT departments at every radio station I've ever worked at don't get radio, first of all. Okay. <laughs> so trying to communicate what you're trying to do uh, and communicate on the website is like a foreign language to them. Just as like what, then they're, well, you just do, what they're trying to communicate back to us is also a foreign language. And it would just always end up in mess. Total, total utter disarray. If you've ever gone to a radio station website and said WTF, that's what's going on. Okay? <laughs> because one hand doesn't know what the other one is doing in most cases when it comes to a radio station website and the radio station itself. Sure. In most cases. Not all of them, but in most cases, that's how that works. 855-853-4802. Uh, 855-853-4802 uh, with your real ghost stories. Hi, this is Della from Chicago, the crazy cat lady. Um, I have two more stories for you. Neither of them involve cats this time. Um, the first one is a shorter one. Um, my sister and myself were with a friend of my sister's. We all had our kids with us. And we were visiting the friend who lives up in Kenosha, Wisconsin. And she was taking us for a drive around, and we went past this old convent. It's no longer in use, but it was supposedly haunted, the haunted convent. So um, all the kids get out of the car. My sister and her friends stayed in the car, and of course I got out with all the kids. Um, so we're looking around there, and being the responsible adult in the group, I suggest to the kids, hey, why don't we call for Sister Mary? I'm sure there's a Sister Mary in there somewhere. Um, so of course the kids did, and we were all standing outside one of the windows and we're looking up at the windows and we're calling, Sister Mary, Sister Mary, come out, Sister Mary. And up on the second floor, it started to materialize, actually. It was like this, it looked like a gray, just a nondistinct gray ball, sort of. And it looked like it was floating around like a helium balloon would bob around in a gentle breeze. And then it started to develop kind of a squarish top like the old-fashioned wimples that the nuns used to wear and of course it scared the crap out of us and we all ran to the car <laughs> but that was it nothing else happened um my other story is about a haunted rocking chair that i had i still have it but i don't believe it's haunted anymore um or if it is then the whoever was coming back to visit the rocker honored my wishes and did not let me see her anymore. I had bought this rocker in an antique store, and I was going away to school at the time, but this was summer, so I took the rocking chair up into my bedroom. And when I first went to bed that night, my two dogs used to sleep with me, and I was trying to get one to lay on either side of me, and um, the one dog, Pookie, who I had mentioned before, who came to say goodbye to me in my dream when she died, she was, I was trying to get her to lay on my left side, and she just refused. She climbed over me. I didn't think much of it the first time. She climbed over me, and I was like, no, I want you to sleep over here. She climbed over me again. The third time I put her over there, she was fighting frantically to get back over on my right side before I even got her over there. And then I kind of looked over at the rocker because it was only about two feet away from the left side of my bed. And I thought, hmm, maybe there's something with the rocker. And uh, that was about it. That's all I thought of. And um, 
then I had taken it up to school with me, and it was in our room. I was, it was a weekend. I had it in my room, and a friend of mine, we're sitting on one of the beds playing cards or something. We were bored, and the rocker was sitting there, and I kept seeing, and I would see this quite often, out of the corner of my eye, I would see the rocker rocking. But when you looked right at it, it wasn't moving. And afterward, talking to other my other roommate and uh, this other girl, they said the same thing. They'd see the rocker moving, and when you'd look at it, it wasn't moving. And, in fact, one night, my friend asked me, out of the clear blue, she said, Della, said, yeah, do you mind if we put the rocker in the hall? No, I don't mind. <laughs> so the rocker went out in the hall. And... Um, but anyway, my friend and I were sitting and playing cards on the bed, and I kept looking over at the rocker. And I didn't notice it at the time, but when she mentioned it, in retrospect, I could see it. She kept looking over at the rocker. And then she left the room to go get some uh, something to drink or something, and I was just staring at the rocker, waiting to see if it would move when I kept staring at it. And it did not move. However, I saw it started to, again, like materialize kind of, not a full figure, but it was just like the from the top of your head on down the back, like where your hair, it was a woman's figure. It looked like long hair flowing down, you know, and just this white, misty kind of outline going down someone's back. And it scared the crap out of me. And I, I froze for a second, and then I started to talk to the rocker. I said, well, to whoever was in it, and I said, you know, I know you really loved this rocker, but I really like it now, and it's mine. I will. Pr I promise I will take good care of it, and you're welcome to come and visit it, but not when I'm around. I don't want to see you again. And that was it. And then when my friend walked back in the room, I had got done, just got done talking to the chair, and she looked at me, and she was like, oh, my God, you look like you've just seen a ghost. And I said, I think I have. And that's when she said, the rocker? And I said, yeah. So anyway, those are my two stories, and I still have the rocker, and I've taken good care of it, and I've enjoyed many good years of use out of it. It needs to be reupholstered now, but um, if she has come back to visit, she's honored my wishes and not allowed me to see her again. So we're both happy. All right, thank you. I'll call back with more stories later. Nothing like having to reason with a ghost to stay away from your furniture. Yeah, shared custody on a rocker. That's why you should just get the ones from Cracker Barrel. There you go. <laughs> that way, you know, you know nobody's attached to it. It just came from the factory. <laughs> it's just, it's, you know. Um, but that's interesting. I mean, it's one of those things. I could totally see that, that you know, happening with a piece of furniture. You know, sure. that's That's well-loved, well-used, and mm -hmm. uh, something being attached to it. And that's... That's interesting that it did respect her wishes. Yeah. That they she just was able to have that conversation, and then it stopped. Yeah, that is pretty That's, neat. that's cool. 855-853-4802 is a phone number to call in to Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost story. We would absolutely love to hear your real ghost story. Number two, uh, press the subscribe button as well. That helps us quite a bit in whatever platform you're listening to us on. iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, TuneIn Radio, uh, whatever it may be. Uh, you pressing subscribe ensures that you get the latest episodes of our show sent directly to you as soon as they are released. Hi. Hi, Tony. This is uh, Mitch from Rock Hill. I'm actually calling in regards to the uh, you were asking about any more stories about uh, cemeteries and people being buried alive. Um, there's actually a story that I remember that I read in More Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, or one of those books that I used to read a lot when I was a kid. Uh, the story I actually got was that there was a husband and a wife, and the wife got really sick, and she... Uh, well, they thought she died. A uh, doctor, uh, uh, the doctor said that she was dead, and that uh, so she was ended up being buried. Uh, and that night, the night of right after her funeral, a uh, grave digger came in and dug up the casket and went to take off her rings because she was buried with all of her jewelry. Um, and ended up they couldn't get the ring off of her finger, so they they 
grave robber took his knife out and tried to cut the finger off. Uh, and what I remember from the actual story is that they did cut the finger off, and the pain from cutting the finger off woke her up. Uh, she had actually been in a coma. And so she woke up, got out of the grave, and ended up stumbling home. And it caused the, in the story, the grave robber saw this corpse wake up and stand up and walk out of the grave. And so they panicked, ran, tripped over, and ended up stabbing themselves with the knife. Um, I don't know how much of the grave robber side is true, but I do remember reading an article somewhere about how the actual story of that woman being buried alive and then a grave robber saving her, like digging up the grave, actually being true. Um, I can leave a link to the article as soon as I can find it on your Facebook profile, but I was actually just calling to let you know that there was another story of somebody being buried alive and actually being woken up uh, and being saved from being buried. Uh, and it is actually a different story than the one about the groom or the groom-to-be trying to get his ring back. Uh, anyways, I enjoy the show. I love listening to it every day. Um, thank you. Thanks for the call. I think I remember those books. I do. Remember getting them where they was like one was pink and one was blue and like one was scary stories to tell in the dark. The other one was more, more scary, scary stories to tell in the dark. Uh-huh. They were from the Scholastic Reading Program, I believe. Yep. And I remember ordering them on book order in like fourth grade or something. Yep, I remember those. They were good. They were very good, yeah. I remember, yeah, reading those. I think those ones, like, I had sitting in my desk for, like, years, and then I finally, like, just read them. And I, I put it off because I don't remember. There were, I don't think there was pictures in them. It was just stories. Oh, did you need illustrations? I did. I like pictures. Okay. I like my pictures. All right. As, as our two-year-old would say. Yeah. Um, and then I finally read them. And went, These are great books. And then I really wanted more. And that, See, I think the ones just with the just words are good, too. What's that? I said the ones with just words. Just good. words. It had big words in them, though, like... Uh, malevolent. <laughs> malevolent. <laughs> and since I only wanted the picture books, it uh, has taken me to uh, my mid-30s to learn how to say the word out loud. Uh, 855-853-4802 <laughs> is the phone number to call into our show. Hey, uh, Tony and Jenny. It's Rube again. Um, I called you guys a few days ago, and left you a story about uh, my brother and uh, the phantom car hitting the fence and all that. Um, I was listening to another one of your episodes right now and the recent call about the Alzheimer's unit and the nurse there uh, really got me thinking that, well, I've got a whole slew of things that have happened at the facility that I worked at for five years. Um, I'm also a nurse and I worked a, uh, oh, I, I used to work at times a night shift, uh, so from 11 to uh, 7.30 um, throughout the night into the early morning um, at a psych facility. Uh, it was a small hospital and um, we have had quite a few things happen there. Uh, some I was there to witness and others uh, I had kind of heard about through the, the staff and also the surrounding uh, circumstances so I'll, I'll explain that in just a minute um, we I think the, the most, one of the most interesting things that has happened at that facility uh, it used to be a hospital so there were many patients there who I presume had died at that facility. Uh, it used to be like a, a standard medical hospital where they performed surgeries. Uh, it's an old building. Uh, and then it was later converted into uh, a psych psychiatric facility, which it's been for now probably upwards of 25 years or so. Um, but uh, one of the things that would happen, and I, I, I guess I'll start with this, because to me it's the most freaky, uh, but we would get phone calls from the police and they would say, uh, hey, we're getting a, a, a 911 call from this line and, you know, uh, can you look into it? Is it one of your patients? Is there an emergency? Uh, it's a little girl and, and she's saying she needs help. 
So we would, I mean, we would get the information from the police. Okay, so it was this extension that was calling 911. That extension is part of one of the uh, arts and crafts rooms that we have in the hospital that's only used during the daytime. So uh, there is no way that anybody could have gone into that room and dialed 911 at the times that the police were uh, saying that it was happening. Um, that She would identify herself as Satana. So I guess if you had to spell that, you know, S-A-T-A-N, like Satan, with an A. So Satana. And apparently is uh, one of the ghosts at the hospital and she's the one who's been who's called 911 uh, a few times I also remember getting emails from the administration and management saying uh, can you please make sure that uh, patients are not allowed in uh, areas uh, around the facility phones at night well unbeknownst to them you know we all the patients are asleep and there are no patients going towards that area it's a locked facility there's no way uh, there's no way staff would go there at night so let alone a patient um you know i, I wish that we had some of the recordings or you know of the 911 calls maybe they're archived somewhere i, I doubt there's any way to, to listen to them but i would love to hear her phone call to the police. A um, couple other things that happened as well uh, were this one time I was working there at night shift and uh, there, the PA system turned on at the hospital and um, there was a voice of a little boy and uh, you couldn't quite make out what he was saying but uh, you could hear something. It was you could hear him talking. The PA turned on, which it would do from time to time, and it still, you know, it still does. It typically happens sometime after 10:30 or 11 at night, and goes on, uh, you know, up until sometimes three or four in the morning. Sporadically, it doesn't happen every day, but it does happen pretty frequently. I, I would imagine, you know, at least once or twice, if not more, uh, every month. So the PA turns on which is weird because we don't use the PA after a certain time because the, patient, the patients are asleep. Uh, so we generally, and, and it's loud, uh, it could wake up somebody, so we don't use the PA. The PA would turn on from time to time, and there's one particular time it turned on and there was the voice of a child. You couldn't, like I said, you couldn't make out what he, sounded like a boy, uh, but maybe I'm wrong. You know, maybe it was Satana, uh, but it was, it was mumbled. It, and um, then it turned off. Okay, we just all kind of looked at each other and we're like, okay, well, that does happen from time to time, but that was kind of weird that we could actually hear a voice. Um, then it happened again. The first time, I think the duration of that was probably, I want to say about five to seven seconds, maybe. Second time it turns on. And then there's a phone ringing through the uh, PA system. So, and you know, we have, of course, no idea where this is all coming from because uh, it's actually impossible to turn on the PA and then make an outgoing phone call through the use of the PA itself. Uh, at the hospital, you pick up the phone, you dial two numbers, uh, seven seven, and then you have access to the PA. Uh, again, we don't use it at night, and once you hit seven seven, you lose a ringtone. So there, or I'm sorry, a dial tone, and there's no way that you can make an outbound call. So we checked every phone in the facility, which didn't take that long because it's kind of a small hospital. Um, no phone was ringing anywhere, so. We had no way to stop this. Uh, you know, here we are about to wrap up our shift. And this was when I was working um, a different shift, by the way. So this was close to 11 o'clock and I was getting out at 11.30 that night. But the outbound call just repeated over and over. It was just 
continuous, just a phone ringing. The sound of a phone ringing as if you were dialing out was playing through our PA system for hours. So we called the maintenance guy, the 24-hour maintenance guy for our hospital, and he, he came by and was very upset. And had you know, he was like, well, what are you guys doing? Who's playing the joke? You know, it's no time to be messing around. And we're like, yeah, with all due respect, uh, we wouldn't be joking around to this extent, you know, to where you, we'd have to call you out here at this time. You know, that there's really nothing funny about that. Um, so he was baffled. Uh, he was able to turn the volume down so it wasn't as loud, but he had no way of uh, figuring out how to turn it off. So um, it continued until right before management came in the next day, and they typically started rolling in at about 7 a.m. Because so I came to work the next day, and I had asked the uh, the shift that was getting off, I was like, did you guys experience the phone call thing? They're like, we heard about it, but apparently it stopped on its own uh, sometime right before 7 o'clock in the morning. So uh, that's it for now. Uh, those are the couple things that have happened there um, that really stuck out to me that I uh, almost completely forgot about had I not been listening to uh, your podcast. So anyhow, I will uh, let it go from there. And I think I've got a couple other ones that I'd be willing to share. So um, you'll be hearing from me again pretty soon all right you guys take care bye good story thank you for the call and uh and sharing that satana uh by the way uh investigate that a little bit further how long did he say how long ago this was that this happened no he said he worked there for about five years but he didn't say how long ago if, if he can track back the dates mm -hmm. of about when those calls happened you can get 911 tapes those are public uh record Okay. Um, so they're, I don't know how long they hold them for. I don't know if there's like a, a death period on those where after, you know, 90 days or 180 days or two years or something, they just des destroy them because, you know, or whatever. Well, and does it matter how long ago it was because of how they record them? I mean. I don't know. I mean, they used to just do reel to reels. Now everything's digital. Right. Um, but those are all recorded. So. If they're not, if they have not been destroyed because it's been so long, uh, there may be a way to achieve, to ar get that out of an archive. But you would need to no narrow down the date, narrow down the time of the call, um, and there's probably a fee or something involved. But um, there may be a way to do that. That'd be really interesting to hear mm -hmm. if he cares to dig that deep into that. Um, it's interesting with the phone stuff. Um, I remember working at my first radio station. We had the phone issues a lot. I'd be in there at night, no one's there, and you would see solid desk lines light up from within the sales department of the office. And you, like when someone's on a sales line, it's just a solid. If it's ringing in, it just blinks because it's, and that would happen. People will call numbers. Sure. But when the line is solid and our phone system was not super advanced, you could see every phone line in the building from any phone. Um, it would just be as solid as if someone was on the line within mm -hmm. the the building and there's no one there and it would happen all the time like multiple lines would light up there was times where like every single sales phone looked as if someone was on the line at 10 30 at night that's crazy and you're the only person in the building this is a building with the underground railroad in it yeah so yeah that, i had a lot of weird things with the phones there that was that was one of my things as i witnessed the phones go kind of crazy but there you go. Thank you for the call. Thank you for the story. We really, really do appreciate it. And if you have a real ghost story, please call in 855-853-4802 to share it with us here at Real Ghost Stories Online. Uh, so there you go. I think that uh, that wraps up uh, today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. We're a little bit uh, longer than an hour, but oh, well, it was, it was good stories today. I don't know that they'll complain that we I, went I don't too think long. Anyone complains now, not at all, which is good. That's good. Yep. And we enjoy it, too. So, hey, if you've not done so yet, please become an EPP. That's an extra podcast person. You get an extra episode of the show every single week. In addition to all the free ones that we put out there, you get an extra one uh, as well as some other extra stuff that we're going to be putting out throughout the years. Uh, it's only five bucks a month. And it's a way that you can help support our show and keep it going 
uh, because of the hard costs involved with this. Uh, your support really does make this show possible. So five bucks a month. If you enjoy the show, you listen to a couple episodes, throw a little money in the uh, the till, if you would, and uh, help us uh, stay alive. You can get into that on our website, realghoststoriesonline.com. Click on the EPP, become an EPP. And, uh, and donate, and you'll get those extras as a uh, well, thank you from us here at Real Ghost Stories Online. So until next time, for Jenny Bruski, I'm Tony Bruski. Thanks for listening to another episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. <laughs>